Well, hello everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And I just wanted to start this video by telling you that first, my name is Chad Little and I am a bootmaker. And we've been running this channel now for several years with a focus on bootmaking and the techniques and principles that I use to make boots. And this video is me making a pair of snake skin zipper boots, specifically Python, Python snake. And here you see me laying out the paper patterns that we uh, develop and have developed over the years uh, that make up our zipper boot patterns. And that there is a body pattern, the body of the boot. Uh, in cowboy boots, you would call the body the shaft of the boot or the top. Uh, this is the, you see the heel area right there. This is the top line, and that uh, that is the heel, the other side of the heel area. So there's two different parts. There is the one seam, which is where the zipper is, and you see that straight edge that goes all the way from top to bottom of the pattern. That's where the zipper will go, and that's the single seam that you see on the inside of the boot. The back seam there, the two heel areas, are covered by what would typically be called a counter cover. Uh, the counter of the heel area is typically a hard uh, piece in the middle uh, of the in lining leather and the outside leather. In cowboy boots it's actually exposed and it's a hard piece of leather that stiffens up the heel area. So the back seam is actually covered, and you'll see that piece here in a few moments. Uh, here I'm just cutting out the pieces with uh, a sharp pair of leather shears. And there they are. There's the body and the heel other side where you see that, the, that space there. That's where the zipper will be. And I'll show you how we put that together. Here I have laid out these uh, parts onto some very thin, I think that's probably two, three ounce at the most, uh, very soft calfskin, flexible in most all directions, and the way it's tanned, it's very flexible. And we use that to give the thin snakeskin some body. So that allows us to just pull on the boot. When we last the boot, we've got to be able to pull and stretch. And this gives it some stability. So here again, I'm just cutting, cutting out the parts uh, with the actual staying leather or backing leather. And here we're going to go fast. Also, just want to tell you, please like this video if you do, and also share it if that's something that you do, and love for everyone to see this that uh, they can, as well as hit the subscribe button, and also, great news, we are now a YouTube partner, and we will be offering uh, a membership where you can actually hit the join button and not just subscribe, but you can join. And we're going to be offering some really cool perks. I'm talking some really cool things, not just instructionally, but behind the scenes. So here I'm actually skiving. You see that's the back of the, of the casket the backing leather. So I'm skiving it down to a, about the thickness of the snake. So just getting a nice refined edge because those edges will be they will be piped and uh, in the cowboy boot world we call that top bead uh, piping uh, but it's a decorative touch that also protects that uh, exposed edge here I'm burning the edge after I've skived it so this gets rid of all the fuzzies 
and just uh, the, the nature of leather, you know, it, uh, it has a little bit of a fuzz to it once you have uh, cut that, that edge or skived the edge. Here I'm actually making the piping. That is a one inch strip and that's just long enough to, to go around the circumference the diameter of the top of the boot as it goes around your your ankle or your, or your leg and so I'm skiving both edges down to very fine so I'm talking very thin paper edge and that tool I'm using is a it's a knife that they use in the garment industry where they will put that into a little handheld tool uh, cutter that cuts probably a hundred layers of fabric at one time. It reciprocates very fast and it's razor sharp. So here we're just gluing. It's actually contact cement uh, that once you stick it to itself it stays forever. And I am gluing this. Generally I'll do a two coat on this and now once it's dry we can contact it. And when I do this, I'm very careful to, to uh, stagger the edges so the two sides don't come together flush. So one is staggered back from the other so you don't get a hard edge underneath the leather that you can see. You don't want that edge translating underneath that snakeskin where you can actually see it. Then this really cool little helpful tool rolls out that edge and makes that makes a little bead again same thing here cutting out the strap pieces which we have lined just like we did the parts and these will not be skived they will be sewn so the edges will be sewn and if you remember the the uh, engineer boots from Black Fry motorcycle boots from back in the day they had the rings and the straps that go across the foot and across the back. That's what we're doing here. So making straps. I am skiving the very ends. So just like on the piping, they will not translate a thick line or a thickness. Making more straps here. trick there was me keeping the edge straight by just flushing it up against the edge of the ruler and then cut the other side checking it against the other and making these straps so there's the ring on the strap and skiving the back side again to get rid of the thickness So here we are using the post machine to sew up or sew the sides of our straps. And this one has the ring on it, so I use the post machine so I can clear the ring easier when I'm sewing it right up next to it. So the post machine works a little bit better for that. It's still tight. You want that ring to be pretty secure. So we've made it across, and now I'm going back down the other side. Then we will trim. A 
Okay, now doing the heel area. And this is where you see kind of the uniqueness of how we get that cup in the heel area. And it's, it's just simple physics, the way you cut those curves. And then I glue them to a piece of nylon cordura and sew them and put them on a straight edge. So they just, you have to work that and that gives you your cup area in the heel and translates very nicely for when you're lasting. And it gives the back of the boot its shape and helps the fit and just looks great. Okay, we're getting ready to glue the piping or the top bead into the body of the boot. And you remember I cut those long, just long enough to make the diameter. Um, and what I mean by diameter, you'll see when the boot is closed, it makes a diameter around the top where it goes around your ankle. And so here we're just carefully gluing so we don't see any glue once they're stuck. Glue the edges. And now we are cutting out the counter covers and very unique shape uh, the way it goes around that heel cup it had to be a little bit wider and of course I give these the sides a little bit of a shape uh, just by the way I've designed it with these curves so that kind of takes the eye away from any maybe imperfect imperfections uh, and really it's not so much about that it's just a good look but um, it gives a, a nice dimension to the heel area and as well as the heel cup itself um, those two married together it really gives a very good look so gonna back these as well Anytime I'm using the snake, um, alligator, um, and sometimes, li yeah, lizard for sure, um, I will back those exotic skins with this calf skin or, uh, like I said, a lamb or a sheep. Anything that's kind of stretchy and thin and easy to work with. So there it is laid out. So I've glued that. And you see how the snake scales go in line vertically with that piece. Now I have carefully glued that cover onto the back, covering up that seam that you saw me sewing when we were putting the cordura in. Now just sewing down the sides. And I'll do two rows here. Carefully only carefully because you are sewing dimension here so there we're starting to get some three dimension some shape to the boot the body you see my piping is in there so the really the next part is going to be the lining for the boot or the body of the boot the shaft And because of the dimension here, you see it's easier to work that leather around this post as opposed to a flatbed machine. Just much more ability to use technique there on sewing. So I'm just tying off the backs of these threads, which is just a small detail that 
do, certainly factories don't do. That's why you see them burning their boots at the end of the process because they're burning all the loose threads that they did not tie off. We basically pull everything through to the underside, tie it off, and then burn it, flatten it, and that is the best way to terminate these loose ends, hiding them, and really giving them no chance to back out, which is why we do it. There you can see the backside where that heel area. It's uh, it's got a nice shape to it. So here I'm making the zipper. This is an interesting process. You have to cut these teeth back because we just buy the zipper tape at length, you know, in, in rolls, and we make up these zippers ourselves. So I had to cut some teeth back and then put the stops on, the top stops, and that leaves a little zipper tape up top so you can sew it down and keep the, uh, along with the top, the stops, the top stops, it keeps the zipper from coming off. So I'll clip those off and then we will put the, the stops on. These are all parts that you can buy through suppliers like Ohio Travel Bag. Uh, that's the best place to buy it, in my opinion. And you can buy these zipper tape link at you know any length you want, really in different colors. Uh, antique brass. This is just the aluminum um, standard. You can buy them in nickel, antique nickel, nickel, uh, bright brass, antique brass, black. So again, just cutting those to length, putting the top stops on, and then we'll glue, we'll just simply glue that zipper tape into the boot. And then put the slide on at the end. So here I'm doing that. And this zipper tape is funny. And this is something you'll learn if you use it. Uh, it is a fabric or a cloth material <clears throat> I think it's nylon but it uh, absorbs glue so generally always you have to two coat that zipper tape for it to stick well and you do want it to stick well because when we put this lining in the boot it's gonna go through some rigors and you don't want that zipper tape flopping out and being loosey-goosey so we two coat it <laughs> Yeah, there's no zipper slide on it. Uh, that happens right before we close the boot, or right as we're closing the boot. So in a cowboy boot, you have to turn the boot. You make the boot inside out, and you have to flip it once, you're, once you've side seamed it. In this case here, as a zipper boot, where the side seam is non-existent, the only seam is on the inside, and that is your zipper seam. And uh, so we don't have to turn anything, which is what makes these boots so easy to make, especially on your hands. No flipping required. And it's, uh, it's really simple. Uh, just putting the slide on at the end, zipping it up, and you're ready to last. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically skiving down the inside flap leather that will be exposed when you unzip the boot. It's on your foot. You unzip the boot, you'll see this. And I'm trimming it or skiving it uh, down to 
very thin because it will be sewn to a another piece of leather or the, the actual lining leather that I'll leave long and you'll see that process in just a few minutes but not, this is a good way to sky it's just a good way to trim out that flesh and get the leather really thin and uniform and this will be laser engraved I think we'll put his name on it there you see yeah so title of a song and then the other side I believe has his name and you see the body of the boot there stuck to a piece of red lining which is what this flap cover is and I don't know the red or colored lining just kind of sets the boot off in my opinion makes it a little more custom because you know if you had a black snakeskin boot if you bought it from you know a store you would probably have black lining or something comparable but red just gives it a little custom approach so you'll see me here sticking this flap cover to the the lining leather that I left long there's the other side that's done so I'm skiving it back so there's again no thickness that will be translated And then we just simply glue that to the, the the lining leather, and then we'll sew it up. Okay, now we're sewing the lining leather in, just along the top side, down the sides of the zippers. Really simple. Two rows. And now you're starting to see how simple this boot is to make. And you, are, you can also see that laser engraved name down the inside of that zipper. And I always leave that part long this is the let's see this is the right boot um, there is a right and a left of course um, and not exactly that when you're making cowboy boots unless you have initials or something that you want to read a certain way you know a cowboy boot if you're just making a standard cowboy boot you can leave it doesn't matter right and left until you put it on the last um, so now just trimming taking a V edger and we do this because it leaves a nice, uh, kind of a burnished almost. Uh, you see me pulling that leather back with my left hand. That's keeping the tension into the blade of this edger as I push forward. So there's a lot of pressure there. That kind of burnishes that edge, keeps them from being fuzzy. And you know, if you tried to cut that with scissors or whatever, it wouldn't be, it would be too long or whatever. So now when you see me get to this end, I want this flap to come out pretty straight so it runs in line with that top that top bead and that the top of the boot so I'll just simply translate that straight edge that I've cut there out and then cut it yeah silver pin it's a sharp scissors you could use a blade there if you wanted to but it's getting a little tricky because of the boot itself. I don't want to cut into that. Now I'll just trim that out with the. Maybe the yep, there we go. So you just got to be careful. And there we go. So now you see when I put the slide on, that's what closes it. So I'm going to trim this a little bit more and probably burn it. It's the top of the zipper tape. Remember, I was cutting those teeth. And now I am just trimming the bo bottom side that will be lasted. That's the lasting side, so it won't. It doesn't have to be, you know, trimmed perfectly. Just trimmed 
normally and then now we're cutting out the vamp and again you see the snake scales running from tip to toe or tongue to toe um, and I think I turn these scales to where they run upward so when you run your f your hand across the toe of the boot towards your foot or towards the the tongue of the vamp it's a nice smooth there's no resistance because the scales are running with the the direction of the boot and that's just what I do other people do it the other way Just thin and could easily tear if you tried to pull it or last it by itself. I'm gonna back it with the same calf skin. Uh, again, just gluing this side, the glue, the, and then we'll glue the top grain side of the calf skin. Stick that, and that leaves the 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 flesh side or the you know the the rough side of the leather underneath, um, just like it would be if it was if that snake skin was full thickness like regular leather uh, just the way that I do it no hard and fast rule there but I just like for everything to kind of be as it normally is when I'm lasting so now just trimming that off difficult when you've got that glue on there and wants to stick to your scissors. Here I'll use the blade anytime I'm cutting along exposed edges of design like this I'll use a sharp exacto blade. try to cut to the corners like that you see me uh, or cut from the corners like that uh, that way you can you, you don't end up in a corner with that blade okay now putting the we're getting ready to put these vamps onto the body of the boot when you see all that snake it's starting to look really really crazy so here I'm just pinching the vamp together pretty tightly just the and this is just after having done enough of these you, you kind of get a feel for how tight you want that to be and how you want that vamp to lay on that the front of that boot and you at this point all I've got is a slick cut but I'm marking, now yeah, you start to see that. So I've got the silver line and I'll come back in and trim out that, which I also know is gonna be skived. So uh, just leaving, what, about a three eighths of an inch, quarter inch. And I'll come in and skive that to paper, you know, or feather edge. And uh, which is difficult. That's a difficult part to skive, and you want to be careful. You don't want to cut out too much material because you need something to sew to. So there you see me doing it. It's a, it's a little bit of a trick, and if you got a sharp blade. It, it works pretty good. And a lot of people say, well, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's on the inside. You're never going to see it. Well, you can kind of see it if you if you don't you know, give yourself enough room to make those scab cuts. It looks a little whittled there, but all that will be covered. And I try to clean it up as much as possible. That red lining is a little bit tough to scab. My blade's probably needing sharpening there at this point. 
And you see, I kind of go to lengths to get that pretty cleaned up and get it to where I'm down into the snake and the, the backing leather of the snake. So that feels good enough there. And now we're going to glue the vamps. No rhyme or reason to this, just kind of giving yourself coverage. be a lining, a vamp lining in here too. So sticking one side right along my silver pin line that I marked and then we'll stick the other side and you'll see it'll come back to where I had that pinched together. The silver pin will rub off even on the snake so have to be too too careful with that so now you'll start to see where the foot goes in yeah there we have a boot almost now these vamp linings you see me running the, the, the edges long there because we're going to trim that once it's sewn. We'll trim that with a, a viator again. Again, that gives us clean lines. Um, and I don't want to... Uh, there's no way you can possibly sew that accurately to the lines of the vamp itself. So you leave it long and then come back and trim. And this is a pretty heavy like a five ounce gloved hand cream cowhide I like to use that because it's durable it's a little thicker it adds a little bit of weight to the boot but man it sure is a soft inside and lasts for a long time you won't be I don't care how how sharp your toenail is you won't be cutting through that on the inside very soon now you see me gluing that just like I did the vamp just a little bit further in and then that is left long and it'll be trimmed out still using the contact cement glue it let it dry once it's dry you can stick it follow your sew lines so that's a nice little trick you don't have to get glue everywhere you can just come back and just glue right to the inside of your first your vamp first boat row of stitching on your vamp and you don't have to get glue everywhere so we're sticking it this is a little bit of a trick again there's nothing crimped almost a bad word in my vocabulary but um, giving a little relief cut so I know about how far I can cut it I'm not going to go more than three quarters of an inch generally right in that little bend and you'll see me kind of bring that straight down almost in line with the edge of the, the zipper and I'm just trying to get that leather to fold into the foot and lay just like the vamp lays. Now we're gonna trim on the bottom side here. Don't need all that when we're lasting. It's gonna stretch anyway, so that'll be trimmed again probably. Just getting a pretty true flush here. This always looks better when you're building the boot. It's it's right. So now we're gonna sew that second row on the vamp, right next to the first row, which was used to sew it on come back in sew that second row and that gets your lining in there a little bit more materials a little more difficult to sew this post machine was not acting great at this point 
I've since moved on from it, but I don't know, I think it was kind of flawed from the start. But I sold a lot of those with it. Checking the knots. Sometimes I had to add a little more tension, like you saw right there. Heavier material, you wanted to, you needed a little more tension to get that knot to pull all the way through to the middle and not leave it poking through on the backside, which is no good for wearing the boot. That's a lot of snake skin, isn't it? it's clean because people do look certainly you can feel it if it's not clean or jagged or, and see I try never to you know run off the end so I've got something to hold on to pulling that tension is important it just makes for a cleaner cut you make that corner right there fluid All that's left at this point is putting that zipper slide on, and that closes the boot. And you see me, yep, right there. Gotta do it. And this is a trick, folks. <laughs> this has caused me to cuss more than a person should because. It's not just the getting the zipper onto or the slide onto the zipper. It's getting the top to line up. So you can get you. I might even miss here. So I got the zipper slide on, but let's see if the let's see if the top lines up. Dickens of a time getting that zipper slide on there. There we go. Did I get lucky? I think I did. That's rare. Usually it takes two or three times to get that right. Okay, so you see, boom, we're that's it. You see those boots laying there, and we're ready to go to the last. And that is not a difficult process. It's pretty fast. So I've prepped this sole, or this insole, and you can go watch that on a subsequent, subsequent video uh, that we'll link here uh, on preparing. Actually, I actually have two or three videos on preparing the insole. It's a lot of work to it. So now I'm also preparing the heel counter, or the hard counter. This is a piece of, I think this is probably horse butt material that I'm skiving just a little bit on the top and sides. Skiving using machine because that leather just, it's not fun to try to cut. So use your machines when you can, what I say. Looks like that's sole bend, I think. It's not horse butt. So I, either one, you can use a nice thick piece of horse butt or a sole bend and just get it get it thinned out pretty good. Because you're got you've got two layers of leather already. You've got the outside of the boot and the lining. This is just gonna go in between and firm that heel area up.
So we have several videos on how to prepare the insole, which is what I'm doing here, cutting the channel. The channel will be what we sew the welt through, and it's very crucial because that's what holds the entire boot together once the boot is lasted, and we sew sew the welt on through the outside of the vamp through to the inside or the what you see there the hold fast of the insole that's all hand sewn you'll see that process so using a very sharp knife there it's very tough leather the insole material is the same as the outsole material maybe a little softer but none of it is soft, so you, you see it's wet there. I uh, don't know that you can see that actually, but we have wet that slightly. So I'm just opening that channel up, cutting about halfway between that half inch section there, between that and the hold fast or the groove that's cut out from the outside of the, the edge of the insole. The reason we cut that hold fast like that is because we want that vamp and lining leather to lay in there and it kind of recedes those welt stitches so it hides them so you don't see a bunch of puckering and bulging where the stitches uh, are laid in there. So here I'm just cutting out using a French edger and a wooden mallet with a, it's a wooden handled French edger um, so wood on wood. Don't use a metal hammer or a steel hammer on that wooden handle. This wooden mallet is a mallet my father made for me, and you can hear there's lead shot in, in a in a cutout chamber uh, in the end of that mallet, and so that lead shot travels, you know, in that chamber to the end of the mallet, causing what we call a dead blow. So it it adds weight to each blow of the hammer and really allows you to get more bang for your buck more more uh, more power or more leverage for every mallet blow there that you get so it really this is really a uh, kind of my own way um, I teach this way I think it's a good way to cut out that channel and why are we cutting that out well you see why now so I'm pre-punching the holes with a, uh, an awl. This is a curved awl. It's kind of a shoemaker or bootmaker special here. This is a specific tool made for our, for hand making shoes and boots. And that simply, uh, you see how I'm pushing through or cutting through. I'm not really pushing, I'm just cutting. It's a, it's a blade and it's sharpened uh, to cut through a hole, uh, making a hole for your your eventual stitch, your welt stitch to come through. So that uh, the part that I cut out with that French edger allows for the needle when we're sewing the welt on, allows it to come through and not get caught up in the actual bulk of that insole leather. So it kind of rides up that that cut out that that guy that channel and allows me to hook the thread on to the needle you'll see that okay so here's a very crucial part so what we're doing what I'm doing there is I'm gluing the area between the outside of the heel the outside leather the body of the boot and the lining so I'm putting a pretty good amount of glue in there it's not like a puddle but now I'm taking this wet hard counter and I'm going to insert it in there into that pocket and you see I take it about mm, about a half to three quarter inch down from the bottom line of the boot why do I do that well 
because I'm going to last that amount of leather over onto the insole. And that's the way I've patterned this particular boot so that the hard counter sit, sits in the right position. He offers a great look and it also is a great function so it supports that back heel area but I do not last the hard counter it simply rides along that feather line uh, which is the, the edge of the insole and yeah I get the right <laughs> let's get the right boot on the right last because it is a right and a left you want your zipper to the inside of the last Okay, so here's some pretty crucial stuff here. So I'm going to last the toe over first, just to give me a starting place. It also pulls that back in. You can see that there. So here's what I'm talking about. That half inch of leather, half to three quarter inch leather, pulled over and lasted down. And the hard counter is below that. It's not lasted in. I mean, where's it going to go, right? It's glued in. You don't need to last that over because it's just too much bulk back there. These are four ounce tacks around that back side where there's more leather, and then around the front side of that heel area, I'll use one and a half inch, one, one and a half ounce tacks. Now, just getting a good start on pulling the leather. you're seeing me do here is a trick that I learned because I had to learn the hard way that if you don't close that zipper up at the bottom if you don't lock it in it will separate on you and that's no good so I use uh, some super glue and some activator to seal that end off so it can't come apart So you see me kind of jittery there. It's it's excitement, it really is what it is. Because every time we last a pair of boots, it's when we first get to see the boot being a boot. It's really a cool thing. Again, four ounce tax, and you see that hard line right there above my hand. That hard line is made by the edge, the bottom edge of that hard counter. So it gives a really defined edge see it really close there just going around about every eighth inch with the tack and that tack's going through the insole hitting the metal plate that's on the last and it's clenching over so that's all locked in it's never going to change until you replace the insole side of the heel area towards the heel breast area and here I'm checking you saw me check where the hard counter is resting it kind of sunk down on me a little bit so that's normal the glue is still wet that's why we wet glue it all right so I could pull that hard counter back up into position and get that hard refi defined line gonna go fast here and just tack that now you're starting to see that really refined or defined line of the hard counter all right gonna continue lasting pulling this snake and the lining leather see how that snake is it's giving but it's not stretching crazily because we backed it we backed it with a supporting leather so it's not going crazy getting, getting out of shape or ripping. I use two pair of pliers there. You see the one's got a skinnier set of jaws on it. That's for getting into really tight wrinkles. This is the bigger set here that I do all the heavy lifting with. I 
See, I put my name, put the name of the customer on the inside of the insult just for provenance and posterity. Really, no other reason. Now we're going to see the boot. So here I'm just lasting in the shank area. The shank spring is not in, which is the metal piece that supports the uh, underneath the arch of the, of the foot. But I'm la lacing this like a we call it a baseball stitch. And why am I doing that? Well, because that is a great way to pull both sides of the shank area together. And it's great, great leverage. So it pulls really consistently and across that shank, pulling both sides at the same time. Tie that off, and then she just has to dry. So the, the boot is dry, and now I am I've pulled the vamp leather back, and so we have, you, what you see there is the lining of the vamp, and I'm gluing the, the toe, just a straight line across the toe area. That's where the toe box is going to go. That's the stiffener that, that stiffens up or hardens up the toe area because, you know, when you step on, when someone steps on your toe, you don't want to cave the end of the boot in, and plus it holds the shape of the last, all right? So the last gets pulled out, and you get to put the boot on. Well, you need something to hold the shape or the form of the way you created that last or the, the shape that you gave the last, and this leaves a permanent shape memory. This is a piece of Celastic, so this is common to the shoe industry, boot industry. It's a piece of Celastic or a plastic impregnated cloth that is activated by acetone. So we glue one side, scab the top side, and throw it in some acetone, and it turns it into a really rag, like really soft, pliable, almost like leather. Then you pull it over just like you were lasting. Lots of different ways to do this. Is, this is the quick way I do it. Um, you know, you probably could say that I'm wasting tax here, but you know, that's negligible in my opinion when it comes to building a high-end boot. Um, small price to pay, really, because uh, those tacks get thrown away, they don't get reused. Um, just lasting that in like I do the, the leather. Then we let that dry. And then once that's dry, we will go back in and shape, cut out some of that material. Shape, you saw me there, I was kind of hammering out some wrinkles. Then I'll come in here with a heel pry and define that line going around. That's the, the whole fast line. Yeah, you see that that's gonna hold memory because once it dries, that'll, that'll that line will still be there. So that's my welt line. That's where we'll stitch through. But you'll notice something very unique about the way I do it that not many people do. It's just an old trick that my teacher taught me. So here's what I'm doing. I'm cutting out right along that whole fast line. I'm cutting out the material <laughs> using the heel brester on the line finisher. And it doesn't hurt anything. You just got to hold your, you know, you can't, get, you can't just get crazy with it. You got to be really defined and gentle. But I'm really defining that toe line where the welt's gonna go be, or be sewn through the, the vamp. And there's no there's no reason to sew through the toe box material because where's it gonna go, right? Same as the heart counter. just gently getting through that material and then just rip away the excess and it's gone so now I've got to move on to making these straps and they go on last before we put the sole um, these straps with the rings 
So I'm rivet, I think, yeah, I'm cutting holes here to rivet them. Just pop riveting those together. It's mostly just for look. It's a nickel rivet and gives that kind of an engineer boot look. The sewing would be probably fine, sufficient, but it's really, at this point, it's a fashion boot, so it's make, a, make it look, you know, it's cool and unique as you can. Simple pop rivet here, back and top. You notice I'm using, a, you know, I've got marble there. Uh, it's probably not the best um, because it, it will kind of divot out on you and break up a little bit. But any kind of hard substrate, you know, like a uh, piece of piece of Heavy steel would work, an anvil, uh, even a jack stand would work. So there's the straps. Now we're going to take the vamp back over the toe box. So I'm just gluing, wet glue, that's key. <laughs> wet gluing the vamp and the toe box so we can pull that leather back over. Here we go. Again, we've already lasted it, so it already has some memory. Sometimes I'll even re-wet it right there. This time I don't think I did, but I'm going to go ahead and gently pull. But again, if that was just snake, man, it would rip right on you. So we backed it, and it's plenty strong. I don't have a lot of room there, so I'm going to be pretty, pretty careful and meticulous about relasting this over. Again, all you have to have there is just enough to sew through that hole fast. Checking it for wrinkles. Now we'll pull either side back over. Getting the toe wrinkles out. And you'll see me can come back with that, that heel pry. And we'll get that vamp leather tucked down into that hole fast. You may see that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I got it or not. There's another sacrificial tag. Again, the, the, the leather already has memory here, so you're not you're not really pulling, you're just getting it back in place. Yeah, I didn't show that, but just simply take that heel pry and do it like we did the, the toe box. Okay, now we're, let's see, I'm removing the tacks, the elastic tacks from when we lasted. These will not get reused, I'm just putting them in my hand so I can throw them all away and not get on the floor. So right on the Yeah, you can see the line there. You can barely see the line that I kind of described in there with the heel pry, tucking that vamp leather down into the hole fast. Very, very important to do that. So now we're gonna trim. We're gonna trim that. I'm gonna trim the leather back so I can see the marks that I made for my welting holes. That's really all this is about because you will trim it one more time once the boot is welted. Just little snip snips, not going crazy. You don't want to get, that's why I don't use a knife here because I have slipped a time or two with a knife, especially when your knife is really sharp. The leather is, you know, stretched out and it's kind of taut and so you can slip up and cut down into your vamp where it's exposed and then you're either relasting or you're starting over so this little gentle snips with the scissors keeps everything under control and you 
you see me being cautious just because, you know, this is getting getting down to we're almost done. So just go to the end of your welt holes and then you can kind of just relief cut it back into the there you go. To the to the shank. Alright, we're welting. So this is handmade welt. This is horse butt material that you can get at Maverick. Um, it's a seven to nine ounce russet hard rolled horse butt that comes from Horween. Maverick buys all their end cuts. For this is this is the material that comes from when they make shell cordovan. Shell cordovan is horse hide. It's the kind of the back plate. Um, that's some of the strongest hide known to man. I mean, other than like elephant and some other things, but even shell cordovan is known to be some of the longest wearing most durable leather so this is kind of the back end or the butt end of that that's why they call it horse butt <laughs> for the longest time on our security system in there at the shop our password to it you know when we set it off and the alarm company would call us <laughs> and they would say what's your password and our password was horse butt because it was easy to remember and the guy always cracked up on the other end of the line Going fast forward here, just showing you it's not that hard of a process. It takes me about oh 30, 45 minutes to welt one boot, especially this size. And I'm just using the jerk needle. No crazy two needle system or candle stitch. A lot of guys ask me why. Well, first it's faster. Secondly, uh, the stitch is a lock stitch. Same stitch you use uh, for your uh, side seams and the side seam is the weakest you know the weakest seam on a, on a cowboy boot uh, but you know there's no reason to get crazy with this stitch because the welt's never going to blow out unless you just don't have a good insole so now just hammering it flat kind of smashing those knots is really what that's doing this is just kind of taking the back of the hammer and nailing, or just kind of covering those stitches. That's why you make that channel. Just cover those stitches so they don't get dirt and everything else in there and it cuts those stitches. And it just makes it look nicer on the inside. And why does it matter, right? Why does it matter? Well, I think if it looks good on the inside, it's going to look better on the outside. Very crucial thing here, pulling the insole tacks. If you don't pull those now and you put your sole on, when you put that boot on, you're gonna find three tacks in your foot. Not good. Plus you probably won't get the last out. Again, <laughs> being very careful here, gluing that zipper again mostly because I never want it to come apart for the customer or for the end user but because you see I'm cutting it back trimming some of that excess out it got it gets beyond the original gluing that I did so we're just making sure it doesn't separate There's that flap, zipper flap. So I'm just cutting out enough to get that shank spring in there and lay, it'll lay in there really, really nicely. So I think I'll take my French edger and trim out the rest of that. And the only reason I do this is because it's just, it's easier to control going around that tight corner. Yeah, you see the leverage you can get with that. All right, so just had to pull that last insole tack. And now I'm preparing the shank spring. I think these got a little rust on them, so I'm just Making sure there's no rust. Oops. 
<laughs> wire brush on my hand. Not good, no fun. Just kind of really taking anything off of it, just cleaning it up. Now I'm going to bend it to the shape of the last. So you saw right there, it it, uh, it took its form really fast. It's the only way you can really shape those shank springs is at the very end when you're right, right before you're putting them in. Is just hammer them to the shape of the boot, gluing them in. So the glue dried and we stuck it and now we're going to lace it in and the, what I used to lace it in is just the leftover welting thread. Pretty wide shank. Oh now, okay, so now you're seeing where I'm going to start putting in the rings and straps because they don't have to go in until just now. Let's guide them back. And I say scive again, I'm using the sander because always use a machine when you can. And if for some reason I slipped or you know it got caught up in the sander, well, it's not too big of a loss. You're not hurting the boot necessarily. You just have to remake the strap. But once you've done this enough, you see I'm holding a piece of heel material. That's a square piece of heel material that is pretty hard. It's a nylon rubber type material that's for ladies' heels. It's making us a great back for grinding that leather. So I've marked, you see those marks where the strap goes across, just gluing them in. And I think I overlapped them. I remember right. I had done one of these years ago. This was the first one I had done. Probably 20 years. So while the glue is drying, I'm going to lace in the shank, and this these threads will stay. That's not really not really pulling on anything. I mean, just kind of tightening it, and that what that just keeps those. The, the leather pulled together in the shank area. And that's all going to get hand nailed or pegged whenever we put the sole on. This really has more to do with the fit of the boot, keeping the, the lasted memory of that leather pulled tight so it, it fits for a long time. just kind of an anal thing, I guess. <laughs> it just keeps that lock on that knot so you don't you, lo you don't lose any of your strength there. So yeah, I'm just overlapping these straps. And because I skived it down, it's not going to translate really any to the... It's going to be underneath the heel so you won't see it. So here we're going to put a filler in. This is a really unique way to do it. My teacher taught me this a long time ago. Just glue the cavity where you want the filler to be and leave it wet and then just stick your piece of leather on, press it down, and the glue will leave 
the line that you need to cut. You'll see me do that here. So pull it back and you see the glue. And that tells you where you need to cut to make a perfect filler for that cavity. It's really not much of a cavity, but it offers the, the leather that I'm using there is the same as the, the vamp lining, just a different color. And it uh, offers a nice pad to walk on. And it fills up that little area between the insole and the welt. And you see I've cut it back there so it, it meets that strap line. So you see there's no, there won't be any translation of that of a hump or anything there. Fits really nice, hammer it down. I'll do a little trimming on it just to make it really nice. Now I'm going to put that in there. Yep. Really a nice inside, I think. And again, the nicer the, the nicer the more detail, the more attention you pay to the inside. It's just going to be expected that that will translate through the entire build of the boot so if you're detailed about the inside you'll definitely be detailed about the outside or you should be so I'm just trimming away some of the humps and high ridges again using that French edger which is a handy little tool just getting it out of the shank there hump there now I think we're ready for a uh, for an outsole straps that will go around the front and the back. Again, just backing them. Should be four total, I think. Okay, now we have scuffed the filler, leather, and the welt using the cat's tongue, which is a roughing tool that we use in the industry. And uh, some people call it rougher. The old, the old uh, name is cat's tongue. And yes, it works like a cat's tongue. And I'm pretty liberal with my glue here. Again, this contact cement, same as I've used throughout the boot. And we two coat this, so the sole really, really sticks well. Which is what really holds that sole on. The stitching does too, but the stitching is just kind of the final the final part of that because it it's very decorative too got another pair of boots there getting ready to be lasted very careful to get every surface glued up And also very careful not to get glue everywhere else.
All right, so the sole is wet. It's been stamped with the logo. And Joe is sitting there watching something on the computer. And here you're gonna see me leave a little hump in the shank area. So what that does is when we hammer the sole down, that, that hump that you see me making there is going to invert. In the inverting into the shank area. Which really makes it makes it easier to shape. See there I did it by hand, just didn't even hammer it. So I'm using a slick stick here, so just a piece of boat art from a horse apple tree that we Actually, my dad shaped into a slick stick for me so we can rub all, all that leather out. Here, I'm just trimming off the excess. You can see I've made the heel rand area black. And I'm having a little bit of a fun time working around those straps. Yeah, being very careful. so long I think I'm gonna hit my my last shelf <laughs> that was probably a bad place to put that yep it was I think I moved it right after that okay we've trimmed that out now we're trimming on the sander that's 24 grit so be careful I like to leave plenty of welt so I can really get a good shape on the sole because this is what's going to help make the look I'm using the nom keg there in the shank area because it's just a it's really what it's made for the shape of that that sander really goes into that shank area nice on the sole bottom of the sole and in that shank area the sole edge. Be trying to be careful there with the, the straps and the rings. Wouldn't that stink if that fell over into the sander? Mm. This is all about just control and confidence. Um, just to what I call a set of hands. You know, you, you, you do this enough and you just feel. It's just all about feel. Here you see me using a nom cake to kind of grind away that that kind of that edge. Like when you're sharpening a knife, you get a foil edge. Well, this is just the edge of the, the leather that just is the top grain, and it won't let go until you kind of grind it off. And that you want that gone for when you're sewing. You don't want it to cover up or get in your way when you're trying to see when you're sewing. Good angle for seeing that that wheel is definitely in the shape of that that outsole. Guys really thought that through when they were building those machines. All right, we're gonna sew it up. That's a K model curved needle stitcher. One of the it was one of the last ones made. I think it was one of the last ten made. The serial number is 1971, which is when they stopped making that model. Just being careful, slow, don't have to go fast. Using a channel knife so it's laying that stitch in to the leather. see me I think I 
uh, yeah, I'm gonna slick off that that sole a little bit there in the shank and the heel area, just to get it laid down really good. Closing the stitches here. If you do it right, you don't see the stitches on the bottom. I think I'm teaching there a little bit too. Young student. You see the shape of that stick is really nice for that shank. Now I'm just going to score the edge where I'm going to nail or peg all the way around so that we'll get nailed on the heel area. in the shank area as well. I'll stop right just past where the stitches end, right there. So this boot is pegged. Just making a hole, filling it with a peg. I think those are six, eight pegs. 6 eight or 3 quarter inch. Go fast here because this is, takes a little while. All of that area is going to be sanded so you're really not worried too much about how many hammer, you know, the hammer wrinkles are that you get. So you see I've sanded it out there with the nom keg. And I've marked where my heel goes, my heel block, and gluing that up. That's also been roughed. There's the heel block. It's been prepped. I, I kind of grind away a little bit of that heel breast area, which is the front of the heel block, giving a little slight angle, and it's just for looks. Using the heat activator to dry that glue. Those lamps or those bulbs there are 35 years old. They're still working. Okay, the heel block has been hammered on, and now I'm going to make some pilot holes for the four long nails that I'll use to lock that heel block down. I think those are 10 8 nails. And really what I try to do is just nail through until they hit the the heel plate and then I just do a couple of more blows just to clinch them to over and then I'll come back and cut those and then bend them over that way they're they're gonna hold bend them over this is just a pair of big wide jawed adjustable pliers or channel locks just squeezing that heel ran down to the heel block really nice. It's been glued so it's going to stick. Now we just trim. Start to get the shape of the heel. We do that before we put the heel cap on. And this is where you're going to be very careful. Of course, you're being careful all the time, but now you've got the weight of the boot in your hands. You've got nearly a finished boot in your hands. You've got those straps and rings poking out, and you've got 24 grit. Sandpaper going really fast, so you're being careful. Getting that 
heel block a little shape on the back end so it's not going to be straight up and down. It's going to have a little bit of a, of a tilt. Leveling it. It's the same thickness of the heel cap that you see me sanding the breast up there. And I put it up on my sander and I can level that heel block by using that guide. Roughing that so we can glue it. Okay, I've got the heel caps on. Now I'm going to pull the last. And <laughs> on this particular boot, I remember the last was basically vapor locked onto the boot. It was so tight and so suctioned onto the boot. Not that one, it was the next one. Maybe it was that one. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we skipped all that. It was so tough, it took me about 45 minutes to get it out. Now I've got the weight of the last out of the boot, I can come back in and really do some finer trimming. sander so I've just taken an old blade dulled it on both sides and put sandpaper on it like 80 grit or 60 grit no I think that's maybe it's either 80 or 100 grit and this just helps me kind of refine that that heel rand edge get it really good and flat there's some fine finish sanding here getting it smooth making it match the other boot. Here's the finished sander. This is, uh, you've probably seen in other videos that we do. This is uh, 100 grit on that side and then 220 on the other side of that wheel. Okay, now we've moved on to the straps. This is kind of the, the final thing before finishing. And this customer wanted something very specific on his front strap. I think we only did it on the front. But he wanted this specific chain two runs of this chain on the front strap. So there you see me just spot gluing it down to hold it. And I think I actually stitch part of, uh, like maybe two or three stitches. Yeah, just kind of stitching it down. You can sew in between those chain links and it's fine. You can barely see the stitch when it's done. Ooh, 
was kind of a pain. I guess I did sew that entirely down. I don't know that I needed to, but it did. I think I liked the way it looked. It just added one more little element, one more detail. All right, here I'm just sewing the edge of the strap to the lining of the strap. And then we trim it. having to be really careful there because I couldn't sew on the side that I normally do. That machine was so good though that it would sew on either side. Now just kind of refining the edges. It's a pretty cool looking strap, huh? The chains made a little neat little detail. I think maybe we'll buff that off and then rivet it onto the ring. Yep. Here I'm riveting. Just pull that ring on that first one. You can just pull that ring down like that second one's not as easy. Set the rivet. Yeah, throw in your tools and <laughs> you lose them. <laughs> so here I have to I don't have the luxury of laying that down flat, so I'm going to have to do it on the jack stand. So we made the back straps. And now I'm having to rivet those things on. Jack, jack stand with the last on it makes for a decent enough, you know, hard substrate so I can get that rivet good and put together. You don't want to put them too close to the ring or it will cut the leather when you hammer that rivet home. Food is just about done. Now we're just going to do some finished grinding, getting, taking some of that weld material away. Which, you know, you could do that way before now, but once you've gotten the boot to that stage and you've lived with it for a few hours, you start to see some other areas where you want to refine. So that's why sometimes you'll see me 
come back in and grind out you know two or three times after I've done the, the stitching because I just want a little bit more refined look be very careful here I think even on the, yeah on this boot I even went back and took out some heel block I just didn't like the way it was sitting so it was a little too high in the heel it had a little too much material back there so I changed the heel height a little bit and re-leveled it and put a thinner heel cap on a glue on heel cap the glue on heel caps just are a little bit more refined a little bit less cowboy bootish there I'm just finish sanding refining it here I'm taking the lip knife and just taking off that that edge again like the leather it does it kind of does like a foil edge I'm fighting that strap a little bit right there it's, it's tough to get into there Sand it again just to get it good and flat. And you can take that sander both ways. Nice handy tool there, the air compressor with the nozzle on it like that. It's really nice. Okay, so we're nearly done here. I've inked or dyed the sole. Here I airbrushed it and left a silver underlayment. And then just came back in and clouded the black around that. Gave it a nice gradient. Taking the brush and getting in the heel breast area. What you'll see me do a lot of times is I'll wax that heel. What you'll see me do right there. I've got wax in that brush and it's right there is the wax. And just slick off that heel a good time. And then I'll come back and sand that again smooth sander and then redo all that again to really make it what we call mirrors looks like mirrors here's a little detail that I do sometimes if it's very specific to the customers I'll put a put a neat little detail on the sole again just for fun a chain stencil that I'm making there. Freehanding it. Take a little rubber cement to the back of that and it'll stick long enough to airbrush it. black dye. I think I end up going all the way around the top of that. I'm just leave a little bit of silver to the logo. Heat gun to dry it.
remove the stencils and then I think I do a little bit more pin detail on the chain itself And that's dye, so it will not scuff the floor like ink does. A lot of guys still use ink, and that's fine, but it will, you know, ink will scuff a floor now. Just doing some final polishing. clear wax there. Don't want to black those chains. Really loose and just touching it. Just once more all around. Okay, now you see I've sanded it again, re-dyeing it, and then I'll do all that over again, and it is really, really nice finish. Being very careful here not to get black dye on those pretty white stitches. What I'm doing there is just really sealing off the sole. And why do you do that? Well, shiny makes it shiny for one thing, but it also just gives it one more little layer of uh, closing off that those pores of that leather. So this is just slicking over. This is a piece of nylon. I think it's ripstop that we use to make wallets, the insides of wallets. But it, boy, you see how much shine it gives it, and it's just closing off all those pores. Used to use pantyhose and it did really good too, but this ripstop is even better. glare on it's pretty strong there you have it 